Here follows an extract from my book Letters from the Broom Cupboard, available from Amazon. Dear reader, it's a foregone conclusion that, as a teacher, I spend an awful amount of time talking. There are those who might say that, for a woman, this shouldn't be a problem. It's not as natural as it seems, dear reader. All teachers suffer from this to varying degrees, but the strain on an instrumental teacher's voice is constant. At no point during the day or evening can I say, off you go to work on this by yourselves for ten minutes. Whilst I'm sure that in a classroom setting this may still be punctuated by questions and interruptions, it isn't necessarily constant. In fairness, it's also true that I never have to strain my voice by shouting. Instead, every few seconds I have to speak a word or two, and there is a regular workout routine that my vocal cords have to contend with during every single lesson. I usually begin, as I open the door, with Hello, have you had a good week? Have you done anything exciting? I say this every blasted lesson. I keep intending to open the door and say something original, but the die is cast and the usual banalities leap out of my mouth before my brain has kicked into gear. I then initiate the lesson by suggesting a few scales. As the pupils begin to try to find their fingers, I'll take a sip of water, or more likely a gulp of cold tea. It's at this point that things could get dicey. Very often, random words tumble out of my mouth for no apparent reason, and I have to do some swift thinking to turn my recent statement into something more coherent. When a student is playing scales of more than one octave, the technique is to use your fingers in a specific order. You must tuck your thumb under after finger three, and then again after finger four, and again after finger three, until you get to the top. Finger four is always a weak finger, and a certain amount of dexterity is necessary for the manoeuvre. It's commonplace for a student to try and avoid using this finger and only tuck after finger three, which means you'll run out of fingers before the end of the scale. During scales practice I find it necessary between sips of tea, definitely now very cold, to exclaim in firm tones, four, tuck. I can't tell you how hard I have to concentrate to prevent any unfortunate spoonerism from occurring. This reminds me of a lesson I had with May when I was about 18, when we were working on my grade 8 pieces. I was pegging my way through Mozart's sonata in F major, K332, and my right hand thumb had developed a certain fascination for the note F and kept holding it down when it should have been released. Despite several gentle reminders from May, my thumb persisted in keeping in contact with the aforementioned note. As a last resort, she found it necessary to mark my copy and above the bar in question wrote, F off. I was easily shocked back then and blushed profusely before we both fell about laughing. Once I'm safely over the hurdle of prompting fingering in scales, it's time for us to work on the current piece of music that the pupil has been practising. Bless my naive optimism. Every bar or so, it's necessary to prompt the player in relation to certain aspects of the music. For example, B flat, remember? Next bar. Rest in the left hand, let go of the note. F off springs to mind. Steady tempo, don't rush just because you see quavers. Silly me in presuming that there is such logic behind the hasty rendition of the notes here. Hands together. I have to fight off the urge to add, eyes closed to the remark. I certainly feel the need to pray. And so it continues. More sips of water or cold tea are now required. When I'm conducting a lesson, I make notes of what we've covered that day and what the pupil needs to practice, so that parents are aware of the work we've done and we can make sure they're working on the right material at home. My persistent optimism is astounding, isn't it? It often happens that I can be writing one thing whilst attempting to finish saying something entirely different. This provides ample opportunity for more incomprehensible garbage to escape through my teeth, making my vocal cords work hard to no good effect. Either that, or the notes in the lesson diary become utter nonsense. It takes some swift thinking to recover the situation, and sometimes it's plain impossible. 
The only course open to me then is to admit that I've written a load of rubbish and explain that I'll have to start writing again. Once again, preying on the good nature of my overworked larynx. After more sips of cold tea, I've given up all pretense of drinking healthful water now. I explain what needs to be practised during the week and bid the student farewell. After all that cold tea, nature calls, so please excuse me before my next pupil arrives. Gratefully yours. For the full collection of Letters from the Broom Cupboard, available from Amazon in paperback or as an e-book, follow the links in the cards in the description box or find details on my website at SharonBill.com. Thanks for listening.